God. Yeah. Got it. What's up, you guys? Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What day is it? I don't even know. Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. <laughs> November 3rd. Yeah, November 3rd. Happy Thursday. And I just wanted to come on today and share, I'll introduce Carmen Lottie and share all about her journey to a 70.3, which is a half Ironman personal record. Yay. Yes. So first of all, <laughs> introduce yourself. We're going to stay on here. You know, I want to, I want to talk about the journey we met. I mean, you came to full circle. How long ago? What, when did you join? I started back in February of 2022. That's so right. It's okay. been about six, eight months, more yes. or less. Yeah, six to eight yes. months. Okay, cool. So introduce yourself first. How old are you? What do you do for a living? How long have you been doing triathlon? I uh, I am uh, 62 years old. I started doing triathlons when I was 55. So that makes it about eight years now. Um, I started because of my husband, Jose, who loved uh, and the idea of doing a half Ironman and do Miami back then in 2015. And I thought he was crazy because he had never done one. But when I saw him do the international or Olympic distance in June, uh, and he he was so much fun, and I fell in love with the sport. At the time, uh, we were only doing bicycle and running. I had not been swimming. Okay. So I started getting lessons here and there, and I, I did my first triathlon back in August of 2015. I love the experience, but like I just said, um, my technique, at least swimming, I had none. Okay. <laughs> so it was a survival process for me. And throughout right. the years, it's been a struggle. And um, the bike, I felt, I love the bike. The bike is my strongest of the three. Right. And uh, run, eh, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't so crazy. Um, it's actually the, I think in a way, the easiest of the three. But it, it's also everything, every single leg has its own techniques. It's three different sports. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, we, we're crazy that we decided to do three <laughs> instead of just one. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so you saw Jose getting so much enjoyment out of the sport that you decided to join him. And I would say you guys are like a triathlon power couple, I have to say. It's pretty yeah. awesome to see you guys get up in the morning and you train together. But what was the reason, like, when you've crossed the finish line in that first triathlon, can you kind of explain that? Like, maybe you didn't do the best. Like you said, you struggled in the swim and you're not sure about the run. But what, what has kept you coming it's, back to the sport for all these just years? The ad adrenaline, the people the community, the discipline, it's all these different little things that uh, it makes you part of a bigger family, you yes. know, and I huh. fell in love with that, definitely. Awesome. And I throughout the years, I have been following you in here and there, you know, especially in Miami Man, more than everything. Oh, cool. uh, I, I listen to your talks, and actually at Max Cycle a couple of times as well. And I realized how uh, involved you are with the sport as well and not only coaching but you also participate and and uh, you um are you know what we go through because you go through it as well yes and uh, also the fact that you help the thumbs up group thumbs up. that yeah. really yeah. touches everybody's heart when we see that you know yes. um so there's all these positive things you know COVID really made me you know Set, have a big setback not only physical but mental uh -huh. and uh, i had switched to like online coaching and it really wasn't working yeah and COVID, then, yeah covid set everybody back it, it, we were we were kind of in a tailspin because we couldn't even go outside for a period of time right right um and Cold so then, yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you you got some online coaching but you know explain that process of why you finally came to full circle in last uh, spring i am the type of person that needs the hands-on okay uh, experience and uh, somebody telling me what to do or not what to do but to correct my errors you know okay. and um full circle coaching is not just you as the the head coach but you also have your your other assistant coaches Yes. And it's always good to see also their perspective or how they see what you're doing and get their opinions, their experiences too. They share that with you. And yes. they're top quality coaches, you know, they know also what they're doing yeah. and they know how to transfer that, that uh, information to you. 
but then aside from the coaches is also the teammates yes. you know because right. i am big i love my teammates i always like people i have also many friends not necessarily from full circle but from other teams that yeah, we've been here course. and they're meeting at, at competitions and stuff right. um and we have this special relationship so i always also learn from from the teammates in this Definitely. particular case for with full circle it's slightly different because we sh you know you asked us to share our numbers and also when we go training, we are paired up with people that are similar within our skills. Yes. And uh, like the other day at track, I, I ran with Sarah and we were motivating each other and it pushes you, you know, Definitely. and uh, on the bike, when I was paired up with Mary Liz and Mary Liz was afraid, oh no, she's so much better than me. And <laughs> we're like, no, 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 we work together and we, you know, it's, we still have our zones and everything and we meet that, but we, we push each other. Right. right and yeah. we actually did the 70 her first 70.3 together yeah. and uh it was really fun and i learned from her even though it was her first and it was my eighth <laughs> right uh we always learn yeah so the tribe the community i appreciate all your positive feedback and i i see the results in you also trusting us and trusting our new process because it was different for you to be so accountable to your numbers would you wouldn't you say like i wasn't sure actually of what my numbers were and now right. i do know them um like when you were also showing me to do my training manual not to mm -hmm. just do the the how do you say the the, the workout that download the workout and just follow it yes no because then you just follow what the computer is telling you but right. you don't really realize what the numbers that you should be hitting right so by doing manually then i know okay i need a and then my screen fields that was something else that i you know the basic fields that i need to be looking at my cadence my power yeah. my heart rate you yes. know and uh at the beginning when i started with full circle also my heart rate was really high really high and um on the three disciplines you know so i started looking at that and throughout this past few months it has been going down i was very afraid of having any issues with my heart because right. of my, my the heart disease in my family, especially yeah. my mother's side. Yeah. And um, but I'm learning about myself. I'm learning about my body and what I can do. And I'm yeah. trusting you guys. You know, you're taking me through this experience, and um, I am improving. I am seeing it because, of course, I came with a lot of let's say baggage. <laughs> like I had bad habits. Let's talk, let's talk about that. So you came to me and you'd already done seven or six at the time. Six. Everywhere you did six 70.3s and how many sprints and how many Olympics? Oh, like a over 40, because yeah. I would always do the locals when it used to be the trilogies and now then it was multi, uh, multi race Integ and then integrity, integrity and yeah. now it's multi integrity. <laughs> <laughs> So multi race became integrity multi sport, but yeah, the same race series. So you're you're a very experienced triathlete, right? Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, you have yeah. all the equipment. You had a very nice bike. You came to me with all the goodies, all the bells and whistles. However, you didn't know how to implement. I would the, get frustrated because I was yes. not improving, right? Yeah, you were not getting where you wanted to be. So your PR on a 70.3 previous was over seven hours, right? 703. 703. That was your fastest uh, race. And of course, you know, race courses do matter, right? So we're not mm -hmm. going to say that Correct. that's not true. However, to be able to achieve a new time goal and actually be a paying attention to that goal, you have to look at numbers, right? And in the beginning, there was a challenge in you actually paying attention to the numbers. And what Carmen mentioned earlier is that she used to just push the button on the IQ on Training Peaks, and it would tell her what to do. And for me, you become a robot like that, and you're not really connecting to how your body's feeling or your true potential, right? So right. by doing the workouts manually, you know, there, there, there is something to be said with understanding why you're hitting a number and why your heart rate is the way it is versus just pushing the number and, and, the, and the computer directing you. And don't you feel like now it's been a, there was some conflict, not conflict, but you were like, oh, this is hard, right? It was hard for you in the beginning to pay attention to all that stuff. But once right. you did it repetitively, you know, we repeated the process time and time again in training. 
it started to click for you, right? And right. you realized how much you 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 had control over the situation, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Especially like, for example, this morning in Kiwi Spain, well, actually mainly Virginia Key, right. you know, uh, the, the, the rest periods, I had to make it a little longer because then I, have, I was about to turn at the end of the, of the key. And, yeah. and, and then there's the speed bumps that we had to make sure we right. had to pass those before I hit the lap yeah. button to then do my six minutes hard, right. you know, and, and things like that. So I had control of my workouts where if you wouldn't do that, if you would let the computer go, right. it would beep, beep. And right. you know, yeah, <laughs> it's, not it's not measuring anything accurately anyway, right? So there is right. the mind-body connection and understanding how much control you have. But let's also speak to your mental, um, maybe it is a little bit of fear regarding your, your health history and your mom's you know, health and how that right. has transferred to your own fear about what you what's possible for you because that is something we've been working on right the mental blocks i would say maybe yeah. perhaps that then if i will feel my heart rate really high yeah. and 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 then i will get scared and stop yeah that, exactly. that's something that i do uh when i run yeah mainly and we're still um, working on it we're still working on it but you come a long way you've come a right. long way yeah yes Yes, I'm able to control that now a little better. I mean, it's getting better little by little. But um, <laughs> sorry, I have my cat right here. I know you can see her tail. <laughs> I was like, what is that? That's so funny, her tail. She already moved. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, mentally, sometimes I would like, why am I doing this, you know? But then after it's all over, I'm doing this because I want to be healthy. It makes me feel good. I see people's reaction, you know, like uh, the 5K at the MIA the other day, the runway, which was lots of fun. I recommend it to everybody. We wow. were almost a thousand people, believe it or not. Wow. You know, it was very popular. It is very popular second time they do it. So anyways, then this when I went by the food, you know, they have food there for you after the race. And this lady looks at, she, she gets next to me and she's like, you know, you run really well, you know, and I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> you know, and then when we're taking the pictures, the photographer, the lady's like, How old are you again? 62? I want to be like you when I grow up. You know? awesome. Because that's a lot of feedback, you know, yeah. that you get. And I'm like, yes, and, and I'm sure, yes, a lot of people look up to us. Our friends always look up to us too. They encourage us. I look up to other people as well. Right. So so those motivations um, make me realize that I'm doing the right thing. You know, yeah. I just have to take time to pause myself, think about things. Uh, when I get scared, just to set back a little bit, but reset, you know. Yeah. Oh, right. the other thing too that you've taught me, it's been all these other techniques, the breathing techniques to calm me down. Yeah. Um, the, actually the nutrition too, which I forgot to mention, you know, that's something I didn't have in any of my previous, uh, coaching experiences, you know, yeah, and really? that has been helping me as well. It's yeah. all this whole package that I told you at the beginning, I'm overwhelmed with all this information and all these little things that I have been changing here and there. Of course, you cannot change from one day to the other. Definitely. You cannot. Right. Because you have to get used to, you know, mentally start working on accepting that. And then yeah. physically and with nutrition, trying things. No, I don't like that. And you can see her right there. I love it. I love <laughs> okay. it. What's your cat's name? What's your cat's name? She's Diamond. Diamond. She's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's so also her uh, Bengal. Okay. So cool. yeah, she wants to be on camera. She's showing <laughs> She's, 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 she's Hi. She's oh my god she's she's her hair color oh my god that's <laughs> anyway. awesome she's beautiful Thank but yeah you. i just want to commend you carmen because i do feel like you came in in search of something different than what you were getting right you right. had a bigger goal for yourself you were already going through the motions you were swimming you were biking you were running but you knew there was something missing and you, we connected, we did your evaluations and we started you on the process. And yes, you mentioned the world, the word overwhelmed. And there are times when you're going to feel overwhelmed when you're making changes, like it's normal, but I want to appreciate, I want to celebrate you for really being open-minded and stepping back and realizing you can't change everything overnight in one day. Right. 
and it's right. baby steps and it's baby steps and all it really is is consistency and making little changes along the way so we we keep we tested you in the beginning and then we keep retesting you and every single time you've retested you've been proved and so yes. the proof is in the pudding and then you know there were definitely times when you're like mad you're like oh i'm not getting better i'm this is happening and then what would we do we would do the breath work we would even do tapping right we would do our emotional right. technique to help build your confidence we did that in the water we did that on the run a few times your bike like you said is is your solid thing but even on the bike you are now paying attention to what you're really doing so you're going even faster than you ever have before because you're you're actually applying the numbers and applying pressure to the pedals in the right way and paying attention to the cadence and paying attention to the heart rate and it can be a lot right so it is a process but i just want to thank you for being so open-minded and let's talk about the actual race when you kind of put it all together and you really had success and you achieved that big dream of a sub seven hour 70.3 so let's talk about what is the distance of, of a 70.3 how long is the swim how long is the bike and how long is the run <laughs> the swim is 1.2 miles right yes. uh -huh. and North Carolina, let me tell you, that was amazing. I didn't, I wasn't sure. I had heard a lot about the, the Karen and this and that. And my, um, actually my PR on the swim was in August, Augusta. Right, uh, in yeah, 2019, I had yeah. 43 minutes. It was also down the river, but that year in particular, it wasn't that strong. Okay. But um, with North Carolina, it was amazing. I did it in 35 minutes and I couldn't believe it. You know? That's awesome. It was okay, awesome. And then the bike? And then the bike, the bike was, was nice. It was, um, I did it a little longer trying to control myself, right? The higher Mom. cadence and yeah. zone three, four. I was like after mile eight. And that's the thing too, which I forgot to mention. I had never raced with a race plan. Yes. So I had you had us prepare a race plan. I had my specific race plan and I know exactly what I was supposed to be doing throughout. So yeah. like on the bike after mile 18, I was like go a little stronger, power, faster, yeah. eating every so many 15, 20, 30 minutes and so on, hydrating and you know, everything was as planned. The yeah. the bike route itself was was nice, it was pretty. I am um, I'm used to racing Puerto Rico, so I can't compare that. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, it's a highway. It's a 56 mile bike, right? 56 and you, miles, correct. Sorry. What what you were mentioning was you had a plan, meaning you had when you're gonna eat, when you're gonna drink, how much power you were applying to the pedals, and you were also paying attention to your heart rate throughout correct. the race so that we could hit the time goal. And I mean, in the past, like when you first started with me in March, you, you know, we only knew each other like a few weeks when you did Puerto Rico and right. you went way too hard on the bike in the beginning. Like you blew yourself up the first quarter of the bike. So I knew that was something we needed to work on as far as pacing yourself, controlling mm -hmm. yourself. Even though you're a strong cyclist, you have to control yourself on that bike portion to be able to deliver on the run, right? On the run. I feel like Which, this race, you really did that, right? Yes, yes, I did. And the However, bike is, yeah, tell me. For the run, I did cramp. <laughs> Cramping, yeah. Cramping yes. is one of those things that, cramping is still an unknown like we don't actually know on in, in an individual person what is causing right. the cramps because it's like i mentioned to you it had happened only on my first ironman half right. ironman back in 2016 yes 2016 yeah. which was i miami okay that was the first time i got the cramping so i and i had been taking my salt pills and all these things but so it hit me this time and i just that threw me off and i right this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> so if I wouldn't have been for that, I would have made instead of 650, I would have done the 630 that I really, really wanted in, in, inside myself, you know? Yeah, exactly. But, so that's how I know it's possible. I 100% right. know it's possible to get that sub 630. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about the cramps is once we figure out the little, you know, recipe that works for you, it could be extra magnesium. It could be even stretching a little bit more in transition before you start your run. Um, or, you know, even tweaking your bike fit, we can all, you know, and I, I think Dennis mentioned that he adjusted your seat today. So today, little yes. things, yeah, little things like that, we can figure out the cramping and okay. So you got on the run and you were cramping a little bit, but that's normal. Like in a, in a six hour race, like you're going to have a setback. It's not going to be this perfect situation. I know 
we had Mary Liz who actually did pretty much have a perfect situation. Amazing. That's, yeah, that's rare, right? There's usually always <laughs> little things that pop up and the more you race, the more that happens, right? So, yes. you know, talk about how did you get through the run, even though you knew you're cramping and you had to take walk breaks, what kept you going? Were you, were you just- I like, wanted to finish. I wanted to, to make it, you know, yes. and, and uh, the conditions, and yeah, it was healing. I had yeah. one there. Rolling you know? hills, yeah. Right. But the people were there, they were cheering you on. You would see the other athletes, you know, struggling with you. And that's yeah. part of what I also love. Yeah. And, and not at the moment, but after. <laughs> yeah, not in and, the moment. Uh, right. right, right. And I, I knew I had to do it. I had to finish. And right. actually what happened to me that day too, I had no idea how, how long the time was. You, why why normally, were you aware? Because yeah. the the usually I use the triathlon mode on my watch. Okay. So you lap it, right? You swim, lap, you go to T1, lap, you go to bike, lap, so on and so forth. And you see more or less how long you, it's been taking you. Right. Well, I think the emotion of doing the swim in 35 minutes, I didn't quite <laughs> lap my watch. Oh, no. I, I don't know. You know. Okay. So then I go to T1 and I supposedly lap my watch again to go to the bike well when i'm into the bike the watch is going crazy and the, i had my bike computer thank god right so yeah. then i decided you know what i'm gonna save it just like aaron had said right yeah. because you didn't recommend doing that for a full ironman right because your watch may run out of battery Correct. so i remember that and I'm like you know what as, as long as i save my swim and it's there i'll be fine Yes. And then I compete, continue with my bike computer. And then for the run, you know, luckily when you turn on the, the applicant, you know, the watch, the first one is the run. So I right. just had to start it and keep going. Awesome. So by the time that I, I crossed the finish line, I was a little like, you know, I was like, I was wondering, you know, but I didn't I know. Did. So right. when I went to the table and then I got, finally got my phone and I went into the tracker and I saw the 650, I started Woo! crying. <laughs> I know. I just got goosebumps. I, like, I can't yeah. believe it. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I yeah. just, yeah. So I just remember when you finished Puerto Rico, how in March, how frustrated you were, you were like, I want this so bad. And I just keep, you know, it's just not, it's just out of reach. It's just out of reach. And I pretty much guaranteed that you would break it. I was like, there's not a doubt in my mind. Once right. you start putting all the pieces into place, you're going to do it. And now with this race, I already know you can break sub 630. So we're on the road to that. So, so congratulations. I'm so super, super duper proud of you. Thank and you. And I would love to hear what's next because. Oh you know God. <laughs> we never stop. I never stop. You know? I know. So yes, I'm going to try. No, I'm going to do. <laughs> yes, Sorry. that's right. Uh, Miami man international. Perfect. In um, about 10 days or so. Yeah, next week. I felt like I told you the other day, I feel like something is missing. <laughs> and my next big race is Puerto Rico in March. So still what we had time for that. And yeah. for, just for fun, we are doing Key West, but I'm just doing the sprint. Yay. So I felt something was missing. So I, I decided to go ahead and do my Miami yeah. Man International. Yeah. Then we do the Key West sprint. I'm just doing the sprint. Jose is doing the Olympic. Perfect. And then I am, you know, my kind of like next big A race would be the Miami Marathon in right. January. Okay. Which for me, sometimes I look at that as a preparation for Puerto Rico, you know, the half. Yeah. You know, so that yeah, gives me confidence of what All I right. can do. Yeah, and our main goal for that Miami marathon or half marathon is going to be, you know, really controlling what's possible for you, even if your heart rate creeps into a certain zone, knowing that you can control it and still achieve the goal that you want to, because that's what happens. You, you see the heart rate go up and you kind of red lights go off and you kind of don't understand that you can still control everything and don't have to, you know, stop walking and, right. and start walking, right? Start so walking, that, right. Yeah, so run, our, walk, our, run, walk. Right. Yeah. So our goal is to have more regular walk breaks, but when we want to take them, not when you're forced to, to take them kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be the key to success to your sub 630 at Puerto Rico. And so right. I want to, okay, we're going to do this right now. Repeat after me. It is. It is. March. March. 2023. 
2023. And I just. And I just. Did Puerto Rico 70.3. Did, did Puerto Rico 70.3. In less than six hours and 30 minutes. In six hours, 20. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Carmen, uh, way to go, girl. I'm so proud of you. Way to be an inspiration to everybody around you. I will tell you, you are such a light on our team. Everybody loves you. You're always taking the best photos. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else you'd like to share? No, just like I'm really happy to be part of your family now. And um, I just love it. You know, Full Circle has is, is been a, uh, a great move in my, in my case. And I recommend it to everybody. It's it's all all around. Not only the coaches, but also nutrition, mental strengths, um, things that I never really thought of before. And uh, I'm growing, and I continue to grow. And I really love it. And I would love for other people to experience the same as I am. Yay! Thank you so much. You're so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and with everybody. All right, you guys, have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.